Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, I, I can't help it. I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta, I gotta talk to the slavery guy. William <laughs> in Florida, you want to talk about slavery? What, uh, what's, what's up? Hey, what up? Sorry. I'm on speaker here. You're just fine. Um, just through going, going through, um, all the verses about, um, servants, um, and masters and just not really seeing how it's, um, evil. Um, and mainly just, it's just basically, it's just work, you know, like having employees and just making sure that people are, um, working. Uh, I see it. Yeah. As have you, have you looked at, have you looked at Leviticus employees. 25 by any chance? Have you looked at Leviticus 25? Yeah. Yeah? Um, so I don't know where you work, yeah, but I mean, in, Levit in Leviticus chapter. 25, it says to, to get your male and female slaves from the nations, and the tribes around you, you can buy them. Um, you mm -hmm. can give them to your kids as inherited property and have them as your slaves for life. Um, but you can't do that to Israelites okay. is the, the stipulation there in Leviticus 25. Um, does that sound like your workplace? I mean, it doesn't, but that doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong. I mean, like, just because that's not how a specific system is in America doesn't mean that the system um, in this... So I just... Uh, was it Leviticus yeah. 25 is, is yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. So I just pulled up a more more concise uh -huh. one, I think, that, that more directly approaches this. Uh, in the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 21, 21. verse yeah. 20 and 21... Uh, anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result, but they are not to be punished if the slave recovers after a day or two since the slave is their property. So in what mm -hmm. context, in what way is owning a human being as property and beating them with a the rod not evil? Um, because it's, the reason I the reason I see that somebody would be um, property is because you need like your work and how you work in this world is is pretty much how you're defined. And maybe you know, in your world, you gonna... certainly not in mine. All right. Well, I definitely see that. You know, you're going to be you know, you judged by. Let me ask you a very direct question. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. Just, just, just to prove a point, let me just ask you a very direct question, okay? I'm actually going to ask Kenneth the same question first. Ready? Watch this. Kenneth, is there any reason at all where it is acceptable to own a human being as property? No, dude, no. William, is there any reason at all where it is acceptable to own a human being as property? Yeah, I, I think that it's smart. I mean, here's the truth, though. It's smart. That, then we so, we are William, never going to see eye to eye. William, that's let's, not no. All right, let's well, take one. Let me let me let, let me just explain really quick before, for a second, guy. Well, before we keep going, we gotta. There's one thing we gotta nail down, okay? And 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 then by all means, you can make your point. But at the beginning of this, you were saying you don't see why slavery would be evil. So I'm guess maybe I'm wondering when when you say something is is wrong or evil. Like, what do you, what does that mean to you? Well, the definition of evil means to break into pieces or cause suff uh, suffering, pain. That's the Hebrew definition. I, well, I don't so give like, a shit what the Hebrew definition is. I ask yeah, you, that. I ask you, when you use the, why, when you say wait, something's you wrong, when you say something's wrong, what does that mean to you is what I asked you. What makes something wrong? It means that the intention of the system is to cause uh, damage, destruction to whoever is in the system. Do you think, okay, so do you do, think that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, do you think that a system where you can own people as property and beat them does harm to them? I think that it's a lot of, most of the time servants are become servants because they are in need and that's really that what was a yes or no time. question, like, William. I, yeah, I asked you. I will try it one more time. So, it, do you think that a system that allows for some people to be owned as property, to be bought and sold, and and to be beaten, physically beaten, 
uh, that that does harm yeah. to them. I think that being beaten oftentimes is for the good. I mean, think about people who Who's good? beat their children or. Yeah. The, let's let's talk yeah, about that. It's for let's. The good. A lot of times being Which beaten shows, is, is so good at someone. All right. So how can I beat like you for violence. your own Here's good, William? Oh. Let's think about this with kids. Like, to, wh why, do you, to tell do you, you that, that you're wrong about something? Do you think that being and you can't kids use words like a grown up? Do you? There's think massive kids, amounts of scientific. I'm sorry, Kenneth. I, no. I just I beg your pardon. I'm probably saying the same thing you are. Massive, massive amounts of scientific evidence shows that hitting children, that spanking, actually does way more harm than it could ever do good. And just to get back to what we said a second ago. If you you don't believe science, I don't fucking care what you believe. If if I ask you, no, you is it okay to own another person, and your answer is anything else but no, you are the problem here. You have to understand that. Like there is no circumstance, no situation where taking away someone's humanity, where boiling their right to live down to their work ethic, as you did a second ago, where hitting someone against their will is a good morally positive thing for that person or anybody else. This is not an acceptable system. And if you don't see that slavery is wrong because the Bible says it's good, I don't know how to talk to you. That's fucking evil, dude. Well, if you, let me just explain like how... Servants are seen. Servants are seen not as servants. equal. Slaves. We are not talking about servants. Servants get paid. Why? Servants don't get beaten. We are talking about slaves. All right. Yeah, like, well, the person who is, you know, there's a master and then there's a, there's somebody, you know, just like today, you know, there's, there's somebody, there's always no, a chain of command. Not, not just. No, it's not just like today, William. Like, I, and and I, I've got to draw attention to this because this is why I ask you if your workplace is like this. Because at the beginning of this, you tried to act like this is just normal. This is, you know, it's it's just work, but it's not being able to be bought and sold as property and beaten if you step out of line. That that's not what what that's not what we do. We used to have a system like that in the United States, and we got rid of it because it was like obviously like a nightmare for everyone involved. So I'm I'm asking you. I don't I don't agree with that. You don't agree with you don't agree. Servants and there's 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 slaves today in different countries. Yes, there are. It, and right, but that's not what I said. That's not what I said, William. I said that in this country we used well, to I have said, legal today, slavery. You said today. I said I said in this country we used to have legal slavery and we did away with that because it was a moral and ethical nightmare. So I'm wondering, you know, and Dude, I'm, I, I tried to help you out. I'm trying to do you a favor by backing off to just the question of like, what makes something moral? What makes something good or or bad? And like, I'm trying to give you that so that you can take that next logical step of being like, okay, well, if, if harming people is wrong, which is, is what you said, and I would tend to agree, just unnecessarily harming people, totally wrong. It, it's a very short oh, step man. to go, oh, well, then slavery is obviously wrong. No, because the intention in the in the long run is not evil. Just because somebody might get hurt doesn't make the entire intention might of get hurt. Let's 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 try. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm just going to baby steps you through this if I can. So a, a moment ago we talked about that the, the the system's causing harm to people that that would be wrong. Okay, if the intention of the system is all positive sunshine and rainbows, which it isn't here, obviously, but even if it was, let's say some hypothetical other system that there's just super good intention, but the effect is that it causes harm to people, would forcing people to live under that system be wrong? No, um, it, it's for, it's to create hard workers is to create a man of work. It's, it's like your work. I mean, the, like the Bible talks about like how men are justified and men are supposed to be mighty men of labor and mighty men of work. And so like, I got, I got to ask you, to, that, this to, is, to, a, this is how, this is how we grow I, men into, I got to ask you, like, I got to ask you a couple questions. Goal Mark, of being a servant is William, to be sorry. a real man. It's, it's to grow William. men. William, a real man. Yeah. I know. I, I that stood out to me too, Forrest. William. Yeah. I just want to. I want to try to back this up. Maybe, baby. maybe a not step a further. Freak, not a loser. Maybe, maybe a step back further. I just want to ask you, like, because it sounds like you're, you're, you're looking at the Bible 
as this authoritative source that you can draw some sort of guidance from. Maybe maybe we can start there. Why should anybody care what the Bible has to say about anything? Um, why should I, I think that I think the word testifies of itself. Um, I mean, throughout time, people have been the 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 Bible has been the the foundation of Israel, like the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets, and it was supposed to be that through people obeying the words and the commandments and the law and understanding the will of God through his words, that they would be um, able to share that wisdom with other countries, other nations, which every nation in the entire world, what? Every nation in the entire world, what? Came to Israel to hear of the wisdom and to learn, and, and the Bible even talks about that's, how that's not true at all. So let, let's let's we we gotta we yes, gotta step back. Up true, so no, it's not. So read, if read Second Kings if, chapter ten, yes, it if, is. If if a book, how, how do you say that's not be, true? Who are if, you to say if, that? If a book can be used to set up a nation or or a group of people can organize themselves around a book and find some wisdom in it but in their estimation does that have anything to do with whether the rest of us should take that book seriously people make it up make it make their minds for themselves people see it and then they that's and then not what i ask you i am fully people. aware that people i'm fully aware that people make up their minds for themselves about what to take seriously the question is what we should take seriously so for example there, there are nations around the world that are sort of theocratic regimes organized around the Quran. There are communities organized around other holy books like the Book of Mormon or L. Ron Hubbard's Dianetics. My question to you is, it, like, what, do, what does that have to do with whether any of us should take the claims in a book seriously? You're looking at the Bible as if it's this the special same. thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, throughout history, Why? it's through, like, right now, if I read the Quran, I would say that's a piece of junk. Why? Because I see it, and I know that God doesn't live through it. So how do you know really that? Just, it's really about... How are you, how? The, the question it, is how. How are you making the assessment that the one book is like the magic perfect God book, and the other book isn't? That's just from my from my experience, and, and seeing it, and, and, and then also... The, I mean, the goal of it is that where the truth is, is where, is where people would be set apart. That's, mm. That was the what whole is it, goal. What does of, it mean for something to be true, William? William, what does it mean for something to be true? Everlasting, um, everlasting life, the truth, Holy Spirit, no, no, no. Spirit of truth, the you're, Bible says. You're, you're, you're bringing your, your sort of stock church answers to this. I'm asking you like a, an honest and straightforward what question. Believe, guy. So I'm asking right, you, what so does it what mean? What does it mean? What does it mean for, for anything, for something to be true? Everlasting. I mean, the Bible, I mean, grace in that. Uh, you're asking me what I believe truth is. Well, let me, let me try what this again. If I, if I say, if I say the Kansas city chiefs are a football team, that is a claim that is either true or not. How do we assess whether it's true? I don't, I don't, that's such a stupid, unnecessary thing to talk about truth. It'd be, it'd be that's super so easy for you to answer. So if, how do we assess whether a claim is true? I don't know. Define football. I mean, it gets pretty deep. Guys. It's like, hey, oh, there you go. Green. No, what about, you're get, what you're about you're getting somewhere. What about a colorblind guy? You're, you're getting somewhere. Colorblind. So what's green so, to him? Listen, William, I, I know that you are scared to death to have an honest conversation about this, but but we're going to try it. So if I say that the, you know the Kansas City Chiefs are a football team, we can we can assess whether that claim is consistent with reality. We can look at what does it mean for what, what is football? What's a football team? Are the Kansas City Chiefs that? And we we look to see if the claim itself is consistent with reality. So I would argue that for something to be true, it needs to be consistent with reality. Do you have a problem with that definition? I mean, truth is reality. I mean, definitely. that's not what I said. I said that tr- for something to be true, it needs to be consistent with reality. Yes. Awesome. So that, if the you know, if the if the I Bible mean, makes claims, I, I, I want. If the Bible makes mm-hmm. claims, how do we figure out if those claims are true? 
Well, biblically, it's if God lives through it. Well, no, a minute ago, we talked about how truth is whatever is consistent with reality. So if the Bible makes a claim, okay. how do we figure out if that claim is true? The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Like, we, I, I believe it's the truth because there's a promise, according to the Bible, in the name of God, and that spirit of everlasting life mm. is the promise through who, whoever trusts in the promise, and, it, and in this case, it's the New Testament through Jesus Christ. William, believing William, that he those died. Are real pretty platitudes. Everything, everything that, church. yeah, that's that's all gibberish. What you just said. So let's let's think of let's let's Why do something is it specific. Gibberish, though? Here's here's well, because, because, wait, it's wait, wait, because it's nonsense. It, feel nonsense. good words it, it coming out of the any, mouth of a yeah. fascist. You're, you're, you're no, talking about you're, you're talking about feelings, nonsense. and you're using those feelings to justify things like no, slavery. Yeah, well, you actually are. So let's let's look at a claim. You can live, and people can say. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, God's real and he can live and people can own other people as property and rape yeah. them if they want because it makes him a real man. Yeah. So fuck off. William. Okay. If, if, okay like, let's it. let's let's think about this. Rape let's is think about by the death penalty in the old Let's death think death. let's think about the, the yeah, symbol. Unless it's a slave, because the Bible says it's okay when it's your slave. Remember that part? Right. Also remember the part where it says that if you rape a virgin, you can buy her. It says that too. So Yeah. And that's a full William. Bible version, by the way. Okay, so oh, William, I'm glad you know which one's real, which one's false, because just a minute ago when we were reading the same fucking version, you said that that was all acceptable. So, William, it because sounds like you're using critical and and and, William, the, and the true God, but not hip, be a hip, William. Hip, it sounds like it sounds like oh, what you're he doing knows who the true God is, is too. Is, my goodness, William, you're just using your feelings to to make assessments. So, what I'm what I'm wondering is like if we think about like the the, the central claim in the Bible, the most important claim in the Bible is that Jesus rose from the dead. I want to ask you this. How would we evaluate whether or not that's true? Because the promise is that if you trust in him and that he died for your sins and rose again for you, then um, the promise is that the spirit of God would live through that yeah. promise forever. Right. That's the, that's that the claim. Doesn't that, tell that, us is, anything. that is the claim. I'm asking you, how do we figure out whether or not any of that stuff's true? It's on you. It's it's in you. So, like, no. here, I mean, I'm, like, I'm asking you, if how you, do we figure out? Our, our feelings aren't going to cut it because I could I could have like a feeling why? and go, why aren't our feelings going to cut it? Why isn't our knowledge going to cut it? Why isn't our experience, our actual testimony in our own uh, soul and eternal and like our soul? Like, why is that not good uh, enough for you? My grandpa told me that the moon is made of cheese and I feel like it's right in my heart. And I have personal experiences that validate yeah. it because it gives me meaning to my life. Is the moon made of cheese, Will? I just think that's extremely unimportant, and nobody would right. ever so, have so to yeah, no the, the, the hand waving there is is a way of avoiding engaging honestly with what Forrest is asking you. Let, so, but let, let's try this. Do you, are you aware that people you know, have? Like if the are moon you, is, if the moon is made of cheese, there's a way for me to find out. Like, William, I don't. I don't. And William. if Jesus came back from the dead, there's a way for us to find out. Yeah. So, so what are you talking about personal testimony and promises and everlasting life and all this stuff when we're asking you, how can we know if something is true or not? Yeah. So and, and when you when the answer to that question revolves around our feelings and you talk about personal testimony, I just want to ask you, are you aware that people have very strong feelings and personal testimonies and life changing experiences in other religions than yours? I mean, just because they have experiences doesn't mean it's the same experience from the Bible. Yes, but if someone has an experience and they say that experience is a supernatural one, does that make it so? I mean, it def they definitely had an experience, but I'm saying there's one specific yeah. experience that the Bible is, and it's set apart from all other religions because yes, the, all other the, religions the, the, are set apart. The experiences that you're having okay, as a Bible-believing person, are going to be distinct from the experiences that someone who believes in some other God will have. But they have yeah, experiences exactly. too. And you have experiences. And people all over the world have different faiths and, and powerful, transformative, emotional experiences with their faiths. Does that? How do we figure out what's real yeah. and what's true here? Through reasoning and just understanding why Holy all shit. of them are... There's, there, what? No, if they're reasoning, this yeah. is this is amazing. 
So yeah. let's go back mm -hmm. to that whole Jesus rose from the dead thing. How do we how do we figure out if that is, is like a true thing that actually happened? Because you you have the testimony in yourself. I don't have the testimony myself. I don't I don't think it happened. That doesn't sound like reasoning. Yeah, that's that's just feelings again. How do we figure out if it happened? I don't I don't know. It's not really just feelings. It's just knowledge. Well, knowledge. I I think I of knowledge as being like a like. I think of knowledge as being a justified true belief. There has to be some evidence that belief has to be consistent with reality. I can't just say I feel it and claim to know it. So like yeah. again, how do we how do we figure out if the the feelings that you're having about the resurrection are consistent with reality? Here's the reality of the reason why I believe on the resurrection is because uh -huh. my my knowledge is that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, that's, Romans and says that you have, but why need, should we think I would, that? I would, need, I would need forgiveness. What? Well, yeah, I, I understand that Romans says that you have that everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The question on the table is, why should anybody care what the Bible has to say about any of this stuff? Because people are hungry for God. Uh, you know, it's what does that have to do really with whether the best. Bible is true? People, there, there's claims about God in a bunch of other religious books too. I'm asking you, what makes what makes the religious book that you're using? To justify shit like slavery, dude. What, like, like, why, why should anybody take this book seriously? I, I know the book justifies slavery. I'm asking, why should anybody take it seriously? It just, it, it just depends on people's experience and and seeing how things right. work. Like, say, like, if somebody, if like, how the Bible says, like, how, um, All and right. and people would see the law and they would say, wow, yeah. what a righteous God, what a what amazing. What a what a righteous, like, what a righteous God, God. That yeah, of slavery. Course. We're gonna drop out, William. I look, man. I, oh, no, 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 I before we do, really quick, I just want to ask. Hey, uh, somebody you said a minute ago was still. Oh him. fuck, my bad. I just wanted to know what he thought about slavery in the United States because the shit that he was saying about how slavery is good because it makes you a stronger person. I wonder if he thinks that that was a justifiable thing then in America. Fuck off, fascist. Go home. Yeah, I. I I'm not gonna lie. I try to get away from the slavery stuff because it just makes me feel so fucking gross when people when people. Yeah, no, I was done with that shit. The I, yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I was happy that you were able to go with the rest of the call because there's no way I was gonna waste any more of my time and my I breath know. on that trash. Well, and, and the, fuck that. People, people do this, and like, like you, you, you're you're sort of sacrificing your humanity and your capacity for compassion for your fellow human being on the altar of, of, of faith here. And the, mm -hmm. the question is like, why, why would you do that? I know that your book justifies slavery. I know. Yep. But, but wh that why? makes it a bad book that right. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I was trying to get him to go. It's, it's not um, that fucking hard to make that connection. It that's what gets me is I, I really wanted to get that clip in there because that's, I was talking earlier about it. if somebody takes a single <sighs> clip from the show, I want that to be the one. If, if you ask any reasonable person, is there ever, ever a time when it's okay to own a person as property and their answer is anything other than absolutely no, why the fuck would you ask me something like that? That person is an immoral piece of shit and they need to reevaluate their life. Not That's even, insane. Yeah. So happy that you came on, on this fucking show in front of thousands of people oh, and man. showed your ass to everybody. Thank you so much for showing everybody the brain rot that comes along with this kind of thinking. It's really good that people see just how far you can fall and just how far the termites can spread and just how much you can fuck up your mind by believing in this horrible shit. Thank you for being a demonstration for the rest of the class. Yeah. Well, yeah, Absolutely in, in that evil. sense, uh, in that sense, good call, William. Thanks.